a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Magnolia, film. Magnolia is a 1999 American ensemble drama film written, co-produced and directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. The film stars Jeremy Blackman, Tom Cruise, Melinda Dillon, Philip Baker Hall, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Ricky Jay, William H. Macy, Alfred Molina, Julian Moore, John C. Riley, Jason Robards and Melora Walters, and is a mosaic of interrelated characters in search of happiness, forgiveness, and meaning in the San Fernando Valley. Magnolia received positive reviews, with critics praising its acting, direction, storytelling, ambition, and its soundtrack, largely consisting of Amy Mann songs. However, some deemed it overlong and melodramatic. Of the ensemble cast, Tom Cruise was nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the 72nd Academy Awards, and won the award in that category at the Golden Globes of 2000. The film also won the Golden Bear at the Berlin International Film Festival. It was Robard's final feature film. Plot The narrator recounts three instances of incredible coincidences and suggests that forces greater than chance play important roles in life. Police officer Jim Kerring investigates a disturbance at a woman's apartment, finding a body in a closet. Dixon, a neighborhood boy, tries to tell him who committed the murder, but Jim is dismissive. Jim goes to the apartment of Claudia Wilson. Claudia's neighbors called the police after she had an argument with her estranged father, children's game show host Jimmy Gator, and then blasted music while snorting cocaine. Unaware of her addiction, Jim is attracted to her and prolongs the visit. He asks her on a date that night. She says yes. Jimmy hosts a long-running quiz show called What Do Kids Know? and is dying of cancer. He has only a few months to live. That night the newest child prodigy on the show, Stanley Spector, takes the lead as the show begins. He is hounded by his father for the prize money and demeaned by the surrounding adults, who refuse to let him use the bathroom during a commercial break. When the show resumes, he wets himself and freezes, humiliated when everyone realizes what happened. As the show continues an inebriated Jimmy sickens, and he orders the show to go on after he collapses on stage. But after Stanley's father berates him, for freezing on air, Stanley refuses to return for the final round. Donnie Smith, a former What Do Kids Know? champion, watches the show from a bar. Donnie's parents spent the money he won as a child. A lightning strike has damaged his mental capacity, and he has just been fired from his job at Solomon & Solomon, an electronics store, due to chronic lateness and poor sales. He is obsessed with getting oral surgery thinking he will land the man of his dreams after he gets braces. He hatches a plan to get back at his boss by stealing the money he needs for his braces. The show's former producer, Earl Partridge, is also dying of cancer. Earl's trophy wife, Linda, collects his prescriptions for morphine while he is cared for by a nurse, Phil Palmer. Earl asks Phil to find his estranged son, Frank Mackey, a motivational speaker peddling a pickup artist course to men. Frank is in the midst of an interview with a journalist who reveals that she knows Frank had to take care of his dying mother after Earl abandoned the family. An angry Frank storms out of the interview when Phil gets through to him. Linda goes to see Earl's lawyer, begging him to change Earl's will. She admits she married Earl for his money, but now loves him and does not want it. The lawyer suggests she renounce the will and refuse the money, which would go to Frank. Linda rejects his advice and leaves in a rage. Linda berates Phil for seeking out Frank, but later apologizes. She drives to a vacant parking lot and washes down handfuls of prescription medicine with alcohol. Dixon finds Linda in her car, near death, and calls an ambulance after taking money from her purse. Before his date with Claudia, Jim takes fire during a pursuit and loses his gun. When he meets Claudia they promise to be honest with each other so he confesses his ineptitude as a cop and admits he has not been on a date since he was divorced three years earlier. Claudia says he will hate her because of her problems, but Jim assures her that her past does not matter. They kiss, but she runs off. Jimmy Gator goes home to his wife Rose and confesses that he cheated on her. She asks why Claudia does not talk to him, and Jimmy admits that Claudia believes he molested her. Rose demands to know if it is true. But Jimmy says he cannot remember whether he abused Claudia. 
Rose tells Jimmy he deserves to die alone. And she walks out on him. Jimmy decides to kill himself. Donnie takes money from the Solomon and Solomon safe. As he drives away, he decides to return the money, but discovers he cannot get back in as his key broke off in the lock. While climbing a utility pole to get on the roof, he is seen by a passing Jim. Suddenly, frogs begin falling from the sky, with multiple consequences, as Jimmy is about to shoot himself. Frogs fall through his skylight, causing him to shoot the TV which sets his house on fire. Rose crashes her car in front of Claudia's apartment, but makes it inside and reconciles with her daughter. Earl dies as Frank watches the frogs. Linda's ambulance crashes in front of the emergency room, and Donnie is knocked from the pole and smashes his teeth, then is dragged to safety by Jim. Jim counsels Donnie and helps him return the money, his gun falls from the sky. Frank goes to the hospital to be with Linda, who will recover from her attempted suicide. Stanley, on his way to bed, tells his father that he needs to be nicer to him, but his father ignores him and tells him to go to bed. Jim goes to see Claudia, telling her he wants to make things work between them. She smiles in reply. Development Anderson started to get ideas for Magnolia during the long editing period of Boogie Nights. As he got closer to finishing the film, he started writing down material for his new project. After the critical and financial success of Boogie Nights, New Line Cinema, who backed that film, told Anderson that he could do whatever he wanted and the filmmaker realized that. I was in a position I will never ever be in again. Michael DeLuca, then head of production at New Line, made the deal for Magnolia, granting Anderson final cut without hearing an idea for the film. Originally, Anderson had wanted to make a film that was intimate and small scale, something that he could shoot in 30 days. He had the title of Magnolia in his head before he wrote the script. As he started writing, the script kept blossoming, and he realized that there were many actors he wanted to write for and then decided to put an epic spin on topics that don't necessarily get the epic treatment. He wanted to make the epic, the all-time great San Fernando Valley movie. Anderson started with lists of images, words and ideas that start resolving themselves into sequences and shots and dialogue, actors, and music. The first image he had for the film was the smiling face of actress Melora Walters. The next image that came to him was of Philip Baker Hall as her father. Anderson imagined Hall walking up the steps of Walters' apartment and having an intense confrontation with her. Anderson also did research on the magnolia tree and discovered a concept that eating the tree's bark helped cure cancer. Before Anderson became a filmmaker, one of the jobs he had was as an assistant for a television game show, Quiz Kid Challenge, an experience he incorporated into the script for Magnolia. He also claimed in interviews that the film is structured somewhat like A Day in the Life by the Beatles, and it kind of builds up, note by note, then drops or recedes then builds again. The production designers looked at films with close, tight color palettes, films that were warm and analyzed why they did that and then applied it to magnolia. They also wanted to evoke the colors of the magnolia flower, greens, browns and of whites. For the section of the prologue that is set in 1911, Anderson used a hand crank Pathé camera that would have been used at the time. Some of the actors were nervous about singing the lyrics to man's, wise up, in the film's climactic scene and so Anderson had more do it first, and she set the pace and everyone else followed. Anderson and New Line reportedly had intense arguments about how to market Magnolia. He felt that the studio did not do a decent enough job on Boogie Nights and did not like the studio's poster or trailer for Magnolia. Anderson ended up designing his own poster, cut together a trailer himself, wrote the liner notes for the soundtrack album and pushed to avoid hyping Cruz's presence in the film in favor of the ensemble cast. Even though Anderson ultimately got his way, he realized that he had to learn to fight without being a jerk. I was a bit of a baby. At the first moment of conflict, I behaved in a slightly adolescent knee-jerk way. I just screamed. In a Rolling Stone article, published around the time of Magnolia's release, Anderson said that he walked out of Fight Club after the first half hour and criticized its director, David Fincher, for making jokes about cancer, saying that he should get it as punishment. Afterwards, Anderson wrote Fincher a note apologizing, and explained that he had lost his sense of humor about cancer. Anderson is known for his use of long takes in his films, 
moving along considerable distances with complex pivoting movements and transitions in actors and background. Of the long takes in Magnolia, the most notable may be the 2 minutes 15 seconds where character Stanley Spector arrives at the studio for a taping of What Do Kids Know? The camera seamlessly moving through multiple rooms and hallways, transitioning to follow different characters throughout the take. Screenplay By the time he started writing the script, Anderson was listening to Amy Mann's music. Anderson used her two solo albums and some demo tracks from the new album that Mann was working on as a basis and inspiration for the film. In particular, Mann's song, Deathly, on her album Bachelor No. 2 or The Last Remains of the Dodo, inspired the character of Claudia. At one point in the movie, Claudia uses part of the lyric as dialogue in the film. The character of Jim Curring originated in the summer of 1998 when actor John C. Riley grew a moustache out of interest and started putting together an unintelligent cop character. He and Anderson did a few parodies of cops, with the director chasing Riley around the streets with a video camera. Actress Jennifer Jason Lee made an appearance in one of these videos. Some of Curring's dialogue came from these sessions. This time around, Riley wanted to do something different and told Anderson that he was always cast as these heavies or these semi-retarded child men. Can't you give me something I can relate to, like falling in love with a girl? Anderson also wanted to make Riley a romantic lead, because it was something different that the actor had not done before. For Philip Seymour Hoffman, Anderson wanted him to play a really simple, uncomplicated, caring character. The actor described his character as someone who really takes pride in the fact that every day he's dealing with life and death circumstances. With Julian Moore in mind, the director wrote a role for her to play a crazed character using many pharmaceuticals. According to the actress, Linda doesn't know who she is or what she's feeling and can only try to explain it in the most vulgar terms possible. For William H. Macy, Anderson felt that the actor was scared of big, emotional parts and wrote for him a big tearful, emotional part, while convincing Philip Baker Hall to do the film by explaining the significance of the reign of frogs. The actor told him a story about when he was in the mountains of Italy and got caught in bad weather, a mix of rain, snow and tiny frogs. Hall had to pull off the road until the storm passed. According to an interview, Hall said that he based the character of Jimmy Gator on real-life TV personalities such as Bob Barker and Arthur Godfrey. The Reign of Frogs was inspired by the works of Charles Fort and Anderson claims that he was unaware that it was also a reference in the Bible. When he first wrote the sequence, at the time the filmmaker came across the notion of a Reign of Frogs, he was going through a weird, personal time, and he started to understand why people turn to religion in times of trouble. And maybe my form of finding religion was reading about trains of frogs and realizing that makes sense to me somehow. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?